everybody in this quick tutorial I'm going to show you how to create your own RAT or remote um, access Trojan program in Java so please pay attention that this video is just for the sake of education and that hopefully helps you to understand how RATs work how basically a RAT work and how you can uh, prevent that and detect that in your own on your own network system or in your own local machine um, so yeah please pay attention it's the purpose of the video and uh, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple one in Java so so I because it is for education I try to make it as simple as possible of course if you in maybe in the next videos we can actually add more uh, functionalities and make it more advanced so I guess this would be enough for educational purpose. So, okay, when you create your own, I mean, this, this RAT basically is a, a server-side program that essentially listen to a, a specific port. So let me show you here, maybe with one graphic, uh, with one figure, things would be more clear. So if you take a look at here, I mean, you can see in, in a RAT program, we have one side, this is attacker, and the other side are victims. So um, the RAT program has to be installed um, basically on the victim machines in order to open a network port and act basically receiving commands from attacker, remote attacker out of network. And for example, in another network over the internet and so on, and execute those commands uh, in the target machine, the victim. So let me find maybe this one also show it properly so yeah actually um, the first the victim machine has to uh, be infected by uh, a RAT program and then um, this program actually uh, might open a port a socket port uh, or maybe a, a web socket or so on there are so many approaches basically to communicate out of the machine throughout the network and then attack here basically send its command usually send the command actually encrypted in an encrypted format not a plain text format in order to bypass and circumvent basically ids ips systems or firewalls and monitoring system and so on and this rat machine or rat program actually execute the uh, you know requested uh, uh, or hacker attacker requests uh, on the uh, target machine so one, one interesting thing about Java is that when you write your own code, essentially your code will be, uh, or your RAT will be basically uh, cross-platform. So you can not only run that on, a, for example, a Windows machine, but also you can uh, run that on various operating systems that support JVM. So these days, almost all of the standard operating systems, including Windows, Linux, uh, Mac OS, so on, they basically support Java and JVM. Therefore, when you write your own um, um, RAT or any other program in Java, basically your program will be cross-platform. And this is good to know because many people actually do not uh, take uh, Java into consideration and they think, okay, these JAR files and Java binaries basically are safe and they can't be harmful. So in this video, actually, I'm going to show you this is uh, totally false, and um, we are going to contract that by showing uh, by showing you one example here. So I, in order to save the time, I create a simple class file. As you can see, it's about less than 100 lines of code, 99 lines of code, and uh, yeah, it's about 100 lines of code. And uh, usually, all rats, you know, breakdowns in different parts. One part is responsible. I mean, in the first first stage you need to define how you want to which port and how you want to actually get access to your uh, how we want to open it back door basically for remote attackers so the first stage is you need to define a port or something like that so here I define port 8080 usually these days attacker used uh, like fake port so 8080 sometimes actually it used uh, it's very similar to basically web servers so by this way, actually, you can, um, for example, many attackers use 8080 or 80, or I don't know, for example, 3306 or this sort of ports because they are very similar to um, basically to, um, to MySQL2 uh, 
legitimate basically services such as web service, Apache web, ser uh, web server, uh, or to different uh, basically database servers or things like that. So of course this port, it could be anything, it could be anything less than uh, 65,000. But um, usually if you choose this, for example, less than 1,000 between um, 0 to 1,023, these are actually are reserved for important operating system services. Therefore, if you choose the port like 21, uh, there is a big chance that, that your, actually your RAT doesn't work at all because this is usually reserved for the FTP server. Therefore, you got to be careful. Also, uh, firewalls and different, you know, programs mostly focus on, on this type of ports, usually less than uh, 1,023. So therefore, you got to choose something else to make your rat less uh, suspicious. So this is this is how basically attackers do that. So I, I chose, for example, 8080. This is common. Or oh, another port, you know, something like that. So you got the point. And afterwards, you need to open uh, these sockets, basically, on the local machine here. When, whenever you run that, you actually run code like that so localhost it would be any IP address of the machine and then the I uh, and the port so here port is for example 8080 all right so that would be the target address so attackers only need to know your ad, uh, IP address your domain name and um, and for example when your IP is in this case is public uh, or is a static uh, public IP then attackers can actually connect to your machine throughout the internet if you don't have proper firewalls and so on so this is for the sake of education, therefore we don't want to, uh, you know, make things very complicated, sophisticated by adding many features and explaining about different things. So then we have a message that says, okay, this port works out, it's open right now, and then uh, this is going to be actually in, in terminal and the attacker would see that. And then um, we have a part that accepts any uh, request. Usually attackers here put some authentication as well. Uh, as well and then because they don't want anybody uh, access to that they need to have some password or something like that I removed this part because I just want to show you the uh, bare bone and the core concept of the how to write it you know rat and how you can actually uh, detect them so because if you want to understand something if you want to detect something you got to know this thing properly you got to understand it and then we read this information coming from network any requests coming from potential hackers and then, for example, here I just add this command to show which commands or something come from them. And it's, for example, it's, it's quit, then they break and they get out of this loop and get terminated. And if it's not, here actually send this to execute command. So usually in RAT, we have a, another function. The name necessarily doesn't need to be necessarily execute command that much obvious. It could be anything like, like this, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, it could be anything ambiguous, it could be even obfuscated, for example, something like that. So if you, you know, try to analyze a malware or rat, you might not see actually execute um, um, command because this is very basic. I mean, everybody can understand this. Therefore, they usually, usually use, you know, kind of obfuscated, weird type of uh, um, for example, functions, things that this is hard to basically diagnose them uh, within uh, malware analyzers and so on. Try to make it more complicated. So for example, I said uh, this name and then I go over here and change the name to this one. Usually it, it's the other tricks usually attackers use to hide their code and usually they code code obfuscation to make the whole code actually way more complicated. So this code is very simple and I mean if you analyze that you can easily understand that this is um, a malware or this is what what does it do? You know, what in, in real world cases we have a lot of functions, we have a lot of uh, basically complexities and usually people use uh, sophisticated code obfuscation techniques in order to um, uh, hide the true nature of a program, right? So, okay, this is the port, then we open a, um, open a socket, basically we say, okay, on this machine, local machine, and then on this port, here is 8080, we got to, we want to listen to any uh, external commands, any external packet. Then when we receive that, it wasn't, um, for example, quit, 
then you got to uh, execute that. Then we call it invoke this function. And when you invoke that, then we analyze this and we execute the command and so on. So that actually shows the basic structure of a rat and how to write and how to identify a rat program in Java. Uh, the, um, basically, uh, the advantage of writing such a programs in uh, Java is that their code is going to be cross-platform and it's not architecture dependent. So you can run it on x83, on R machine, um, even you can run this on uh, Android and different devices that support JVM. And these days, actually, all the standard operating system runtime environment actually support this environment. So, okay, let's actually um, execute. Uh, let's first um, compile that so there's no bug or something. Then we are going to execute that. So let's execute this now. And so as you can see, there is no any issue. It opened properly. And now we are going to um, run the code here. So to do that, we can use actually telnet just for, for testing. Um, I did this before, and I am going to run that telnet, um, the IP address. So I know I'm talking about a local machine. But when this is a target machine on the internet, if I have a static IP, then I can just enter that IP or domain name. And then port 8080. So as you can see, I click connect there. and. Uh, Let's see what happens. So I want to see the process, the, the, the running processes on this machine, for example. So I use, I can actually do everything. I can wipe out the memory. I can encrypt the whole disk. I can run a ransomware. I can download the file or so on. I just try to execute that. And to basically hide this from firewalls, I just show you here. Okay, so this is what we get. For example, we use a the other one, I would say uh, ls, just clicking the list. And as you can see, it shows us the list of the uh, files on the directory. Of course, you can use various commands. But here is just for the sake of you know education. It's not uh, going to be a complete. Of course, if you write something like that and put it on network, any basic firewalls can identify this. This is the fact because it works very easy. It doesn't lose basically connect back. More sophisticated techniques, it just open a port. More advanced, basically, uh, rats use uh, connect back or back connect. Um, I forgot actually what, what, uh, what I can think this is connect back and or reverse shell. Uh, this is also, I think, called uh, reverse shell. You know, and instead of, for example, opening a port, they try to connect uh, to an uh, external uh, machine. Um, um, and therefore, they don't need to open a port. Because when you open a port, actually, you trigger your local default, basically, firewalls. And, but actually, it shows you how it works. So the process is like that. Opening that, we have a connection stage. You know, we need to define, OK, where do we want to connect? Uh, and then we need to use socket, by the way, either for opening a port on the local machine or to connect to a remote machine. And then we have a part to basically receive commands, I mean, and then execute those commands. So this part couldn't be actually very clear. Sometimes it's they use basically encryption, encrypted commands or encryption. So you know, and uh, then they actually execute the code, and the answer would actually return also in, in, in basically uh, uh, incognito or in encrypted uh, encrypted format, right? So yeah, uh, so this is the way actually you can 
run and you can execute, you can identify a rat. And uh, I hope this video actually helped you actually get some idea about that. If you like that, if you find it actually uh, uh, informative, please uh, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and share this video. That helps me to actually grow this channel, dedicate more time, actually create more uh, sophisticated videos and uh, uh, more informative. I hope that you enjoy it and uh, wish you a nice time. Bye-bye.